Yeah, so tell us, uh, you know, talking more about Rob Arnold's book and, and kind of like he's setting the table for the, the terroir argument. We're looking at kind of the future of a, a regionalization of, of whiskey in the, in, uh, across the United States. Um, but, you know, what did you take away from, from his approach? And, and the, you mentioned a couple of things, that, how flavor is built. Yeah, so one of, one of the sort of, to me, the, the key and most poignant arguments for terroir, whether, the, whether this data, the scientific data is there or not, is that there are only three places in the whiskey making process where flavor is created. Um, the first one being uh, the barley itself and the way that it's malted, mm -hmm. um, fermentation, and then maturation. So mm -hmm. distillation, which a lot of times is emphasized as the most important part of the whiskey making process, and I'm, I'm not saying that it's not and, and that it's, it, it doesn't play a big role in ultimately the final flavor, but distillation is just a concentration of things be it alcohol or flavor or aroma that were created prior to distillation. Mm -hmm. So I think just fundamentally, if you were to look at, the, the, look at that from a scientific lens, there's no way that, like that, that type of grain and the, the, the building blocks found within that grain that then the yeast consumes and either amplifies or turns into other flavor profiles or aroma profiles is not going to be playing a big part in whiskey's final flavor. Um, so, yeah, super cool stuff. You know, for our, from our standpoint, I mean, just to sort of take one variable out of the equation, you know, we were looking to basically just produce a pale malt. So it's well modified, mm -hmm. kiln to about two, two and a half SRM. So not a tremendous amount of color development there. Um, so hoping to keep that kind of piece of the story somewhat so that the variety can speak, mm -hmm. you know. Um, to, it, to its best accord. So yeah, so super cool stuff there. Well, tell us, um, we've been playing around with a bunch of fun stuff. We've also done a bunch of smoke projects together. How are those coming along? Yeah, so um, we've got two different uh, smoked malts that we've been maturing for quite some time. Uh, Peachwood smoke and a hickory smoke from y'all. Mm -hmm. um, this is the hickory smoke. Um, and we're really loving it. We find that it gives a lot of really interesting, like barbecue smoky qualities mm -hmm. uh, to the spirit. So maybe not as overwhelming as say a peat smoke. Right. Um, which is oftentimes the thing about right. single malt that people object to and they just assume that all single malt tastes like, right. like a bog. Yeah, um, yeah or you know, chewing on seaweed. But to us, there's like a really nice underlying smoke and barbecue profile uh, to this whiskey that Ooh, yeah. um, it sort of finishes a little bit smokier. Mm -hmm. um, it's really, really fun. Nice. And so this has been in the barrel for about two years. Um, That's encouraging too, that it's holding on yeah. to, to that. The smoke character is, is standing strong through mm -hmm. that. Very cool stuff. Yeah, definitely not your peat, bog, salinity, you know, not, mm -hmm. nothing there. Just definitely, yeah, clean, good wood smoke, but not like, not like cat, uh, campfire. Yeah, it doesn't smell like you've been sitting by a campfire yeah. all night long. It's, to me, it's, it's more of like a, if you were to catch a whiff of like somebody who's been smoking, a, you know, a right. brisket Cooking for, meat. Yeah, exactly. for a few hours. Um, so mm -hmm. really nice gives it sort of some some deeper texture. Mm -hmm. uh, lengthens the finish. Yeah, length, um, lengthens the finish for sure. Yeah, well tell me, was this like 100% smoked recipe or do we do this one? In? I the way how we, we started this. off sort of small. Um, if I'm remembering correctly, this is in like the 20 to 30% smoked malt range. Okay. Um, we didn't want to go too overwhelming too fast, um, but we'll probably start to introduce uh, some some deeper smoke malts um, here in the next year. We've we've sort of uh, outlined uh, the rest of this year as potentially doing some 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 new projects based off of things that what we've learned up. over the last couple of years with some different things. So nice. nice. Um, yeah. Yeah, well, we continue to grow the smoke program. So I mean, we we've got uh, you know peach wood from a Georgia orchard and. 
wine barrels and plum mm -hmm. wood and all sorts of stuff. So we're, we're always exploring in that space. So whatever y'all can come up with, we're into it. Yeah. yeah, we've got some really fun. Uh, we've sort of over the last couple of years been exploring uh, the finishing, the barrel finishing world of things. Very um, cool. So we traded some barrels with Kill Devil um, out on the coast for some of their rum barrels. They took some Ooh. of our single malt barrels. Um, and so we're cool. pretty excited about some rum finishes um, to find their way to market in the next little while. Um, we've got nice. some wine finishing going on, cool. um, which will be really interesting. Very cool, man. Well, thank you for spending some time with us. This has been super cool to catch up. Yeah, and, uh, appreciate really appreci you coming out. Absolutely appreciate the long-term support, man. This has been great. Can't wait to see what comes next. Yeah, thank cool. you.